November 11, 2008 remains a watershed in the political history of Edo State against the backdrop of its recent checkered past, where ineptitude in governance reduced the state to a decay, if not a total collapse of public infrastructure in all sectors. Before that date, hope seemed lost for the resilient electorate of Edo State, who a year earlier, precisely on April 14, 2007, had gone to the post to elect their choice of executive governor for Edo State, Comrade Adams Aliyu Oshomole, an illustrious son of Edo State and a legendary labor leader. The freely given mandate had been hijacked by powerful political interests in the opposing political party, who apparently manipulated the electoral process to their temporary advantage. By sheer resilience, determination and stoic resolve of a people desirous of a new political order in the state, therefore, the stolen mandate was restored through an historic judgment of the Edo State Governorship Election Petitions Tribunal, later confirmed by the Federal Court of Appeal, which sat in Benin. Kermit Adams Oshomele thus became the authentic and duly elected governor of Edo State upon being sworn into office on November 12, 2008, and since then, the pace of development in the state has been outstanding. In the opinion of most citizens, the Action Congress of Nigeria-led government of Comrade Adams Oshomale has redefined purposeful governance in a truly democratic environment. At his swearing in, Governor Adams Oshomale proclaimed a government of new beginning to symbolize the state's regeneration after years of stupor, decay and despondency. After three years of purposeful and responsible governance, Perceptive observers have expressed the viewpoint that the Adams Oshomale administration has indeed struck the right chord in the management of the state's challenges as had never been seen in decades. Though the administration came into office at a time of harsh international and national economic crisis, the government, through innovative measures, has thus far sustained the trend of development. A striking peculiarity of the administration had been its strong will to confront vested and entrenched interests head-on to change the status quo or government as usual. In addressing this challenge, the administration evolved a new, creative and people-driven approach to development planning while ensuring a constructive interface with the people. As the Cambrid governor enunciated in one of his budget speeches, there was need to avoid the pitfall of the typical quantitative and publicity-driven approach to project execution, hence the cautious speed his government has adopted in project execution. In the third year of the Adams Oshomale administration, virtually all sectors have been impacted upon positively by the government. This realization that some of us in seeking office pledged that we can revise the declining fortune of the state. Now we really needed to be more imaginative and more creative in the way that we apply public resources and carefully order our priorities in a way that resources will be applied to deliver the greatest good to the greatest number. Um, at least speaking for this administration, um, the people are the best judge, but I, I think there is no question that a do state today is not what it was just some two years and eight months ago. Um, but like I've argued somewhere, it is still easier to point out what we have changed rather than what remains to be done because there are huge challenges virtually in all sectors the social sector, the economic sector, everywhere. But 
if we sustain the progress that we have started, I believe that uh, at the end of the day, the original dream will be realized. In retrospect, the tempo of development in the state effectively took off with the Urban Renewal Initiative, which sought to give major towns in the state, and Benin City in particular, the look of modernity, irrespective of its ancient heritage. Benin City, the Edo State Capital, has indeed undergone transformation in about three years as the state capital without losing its ancient characteristics, which are historically significant. The transformation was reinforced by Governor Oshomale's belief that though the city was ancient, it had the right to look modern and beautiful. The Ovoranwe Square, popularly called Ring Road, and right at the heart of the state capital, today typifies this transformation. At the onset of this administration, the typical scene of the square was utterly chaotic. Destitute, Sotaisis, Deviants and Miscreants held sway within the vicinity of the square while constituting severe nuisance. Menacingly, refuse littered everywhere, effusing offensive odor. It was shame. Also was Oba Market Road that runs into King Square. Today, the situation is totally different as the King Square now symbolizes the urban renewal program of the administration. The long, elusive serenity and aesthetic beauty of the square has now been restored. The transformation of the King Square from a den of chaos into an organized and beautiful city center is a metaphor for what Edo State can and must become with proper planning and collective resolve, so said Governor Adams Oshomale. Across Edo State, massive construction, reconstruction and rehabilitation have taken place on hitherto impassable roads, which in turn now facilitate movement of goods, persons and services. The administration was spurred on by the belief that road development is a crucial stimulant to the growth of commerce and industrial development in any modern state. Within major towns in the state, this modest effort has significantly eased traffic congestion and in Benin City in particular, a significant traffic decongestion has been achieved. Presently, work has been completed on the reconstruction of Akbakpava Road, Saple Road, Stadium Road, Second West Secular Road, Oba Market Road, Ekpeneda Street and Arusagbe Road, while others like Airport Road, Siloko Road, Oluku Ugbawa, Uselu Dawson Road, Five Junction and adjoining streets are ongoing. Another landmark is the completion of Costain, Isunora Road. Years back, this community was entirely cut off by erosion and massive refuse dump, while most of its residents fled. But today, the Adams Oshomale administration has brought smiles to the people of Costain, Isunora Road, now renamed Gani Faomi Layout. Rehabilitation has been completed on 32 other roads in Benin City alone, while other roads have similarly been constructed, reconstructed or rehabilitated in other major towns in the three senatorial districts of the state, as the entire state has been described as construction site. The roads which spread across the three senatorial districts are Ishwa Egbele Road, Amedro Boha Road, Ekberi and Ekbete Road and Bridges, Jetu Afua, Iora Apana Road, Jetu Ayua Road, Jetu Ibie Road, Aochi Jetu Afasio, Ikabigbo Road, Iyamo Iora Road, Ayugui, Apana Imegba, Imakebo Pepe Road, Ivioge Igode Uzanu Road, Igwebe Udo Road, Igwebe Eweimi Ewato, Oodwa Emu Uwesa Road, Eobanosa Igbanke Road, Oga Idungo Road, Evogae Ugo Uronigbe Road, Uhe Olumoye Road, Igobazua Umaza Siloko Road, Oto Ihewe Ogbe Road, Ososo Oja Uneme Osuigara Road, 
Ira, Usugbenu, Ugbegun, Ujogba Road. Because of the belief of the Adams Oshomole administration that past habits of spreading resources too thinly over virtually all the traditional budget heads grossly undermine government's capacity to make real impact in any area. It has consistently devoted about 60% of the state's annual budget to capital projects. Uh, my first budget, we revise the ratio. 40% to recurrent expenditure and 60% to capital project. Which was why the first year we saved as much as 5 billion naira. When we compare what Professor Osubo's government spent on recurrent expenditure for 2008 to what we spent in 2009 during the same period. And how did we achieve that? By consciously trying to cut all sorts of little little costs in government. Because somehow you will find that every desk in the bureaucracy is a bleeding point. Five naira here, five million there, fifty million here, a hundred million there. You put it together, you are cutting billion. Just remember that just hundred million in ten places is already giving you a billion. And um, and the result is that we have a couple of things you know to show for it now. So we've been able to revise that. Gully erosion has constituted a major problem for Edo State and by experts' analysis, an estimated 565 square kilometers of its land area is under gully erosion, while an estimated 2,000 square kilometers of its watershed is degraded. The ambitious Benin City Storm Water Project is designed to put a permanent solution to the flooding and erosion problem in Benin City, the state capital. The first phase of the project involves areas covering Uwelu, Teacher's House Axis and the reconstruction of nine roads. The project is estimated at 30 billion naira, which makes it one of the largest single capital state projects in the country. The scope of work on the stormwater project includes the construction of an open concrete canal of about 45 feet by 15 feet in width and depth, respectively, covering a distance of 7.5 kilometers. It also includes the construction of a network of covered concrete tributary of smaller canals covering 7.8 kilometers, as well as the reclamation and reconstruction of nine intra-city roads with side drains, walkways, streetlights and lawns. The government of Comrade Governor Adams Oshomale has made no pretenses about its avowed commitment to ensuring an efficient educational system in the state. In fact, Primary and post-primary education is a major priority of the administration, wherein far-reaching redemptive measures have been taken to create a right environment for the schools. With the reconstitution of the State Universal Basic Education Board, CBEB, the state is now able to access funds from the UBE Fund for schools development across the state. There is no doubt whatsoever that the education sector in Odo State has suffered a terrible decay for many years and particularly worse under those group of persons who wanted to stall the state's access to UBE fund. The education sector was plagued by a multiplicity of problems and vices. The dilapidation of the physical structures in our schools was reprehensible. Leaking roofs, falling ceilings, in fact, schools across the state became haven for criminals. Indeed, instructional materials were severely lacking, while underfunding and low staff morale bedeviled the system. It is not a place to say that government was either sleeping or was on sabbatical leave. However, the sad story of education in Edo State is now changing for the better and at a meteoric pace under the administration of Comrade Governor Adams Oshomole. The administration has demonstrated a resolve to tackle the challenges in the sector head-on and so has begun a rescue program christened Total Transformation of the Education Sector. These are